Okay, in this video, I will solve four more questions with you regarding GMAT. In the first one, the question asks, for what value of x between minus 4 and 4 inclusive, it's the value of x squared minus 10x plus 16, the greatest. A good strategy to solve this question is to know the graph of this guy here. Because this is a second degree polynomial, the graph will be a parabola. And because the number that multiply the x squared, it's a positive number, the parabola will be up, will be concave upwards, okay? The a, we usually call the number that multiply the x squared a, and this b, and this c. When a is a positive number, the graph of the second degree polynomial, that will be a parabola, will be concave upwards. To conclude this question, it's a it's good to know the, the roots of this polynomial. I will show why after we find the roots. The roots, just to remind you, are the numbers that I need to change, that I need to switch here in order everything be equal zero, okay? So let's find out what are the numbers that we need to change by x in order to have the expression, the total expression equals zero, okay? Two, Know this, I have a lot of strategies to find out those roots. I will use a very common one that it's using the Bhaskara formula. So according to Bhaskara formula, the roots can be evaluated as x being equal minus b plus minus square root of delta divided by 2a, where this delta it's evaluated by b squared minus 4ac. Uh, so let's find out the value of delta. Uh, as you can see, b, it's minus 10. So minus 10 to the power of 2, it's minus 10 times minus 10, that it's 100, minus 4, a, it's 1, and c, it's 16. So we have that delta is 100 minus 4 times 1, it's 4, and 4 times 16, it's 64, and 100 minus 64, it will be equal to 36. So once I know that the value of x is 36, I know that the roots are minus b. Note see that minus b, it's minus minus 10, that will be 10, plus minus square root of delta. Square root of 36, it's 6, because 6 to the power of 2 is 36, divided by 2 times a. a is 1, so 2 times 1, it will be 2. So the roots are, firstly, consider the plus sign. So 10 plus 6, it's 16 over 2, it's 8. And 10 minus 6, it's 4. 4 over 2, it will be 2. So the roots are 2 and 8. Look why it's important to know the roots in this case. We already knew that the graph will be a parabola, concave upwards, but now we have a very important information that will be the roots of the polynomial. So the roots are 2 and 8. Now I can uh, draw a very good sketch of the graph of the polynomial that will be this parabola here. And remember that the interval, it's the interval between minus 4 and 4. So I will consider the interval minus 4 and 4. So now it's easy to see that when you change the values of x by numbers between minus 4 and 4, you have for each of those axes one value of y. That will be the value of the expression that you have there, that second degree polynomial. So, note see that as far as you go left here, as far as you go left, you have greater y's. So, as far as you go left, the value of y increases. So the greatest value that the polynomial assumes 
when you change the value of x by numbers between minus 4 and 4, it will be when x is exactly minus 4 itself. So when you change x by minus 4, it will be the greatest value that the polynomial assumes. You don't need to change the value by minus 4 and to find out the uh, value of the polynomial. You just need to know what is the value of x that turns this polynomial the greatest. And as you saw before, the greatest one between the interval minus 4 and 4, the value of x that turns this polynomial the greatest the greatest as possible, it will be x equal minus 4. So the answer will be a minus 4. Let's go to the second one. In the second question, the statement told us that x is equal minus 5 over h and y is minus 1 over 2. And we need to know what is the value of x of the expression minus 2x minus y squared. So all we need to do is to change the value of x by minus 5 over 8 and the value of y by minus 1 over 2. And I suggest you all the time that you need to change a value of the number and the number is negative. You put the number inside a parenthesis. If you do that, you avoid a lot of mistakes. So I'm doing this minus 2 times minus 5 over 8 minus y squared. That will be minus 1 over 2 to the power of 2. This will be equal minus times minus. It's, it, it will be plus and 2 times 5. It will be 10. So I have 10 over 8 minus, uh, minus 1 over 2 to the power of 2. It will be positive uh, because minus times minus it's positive. And when I have a fraction inside of a parent inside of parentheses to the power of some number, uh, when we have this, you need to remember that the numerator and the denominator will be to the power of that exponent. So in this case, the result it will be positive, positive something, and it will be positive what? Let's see. 1 to the power of 2, it will be 1, and 2 to the power of 2, it will be 4. So, minus 1 and a half to the power of 2, it will be 1 fourth. Then we have 10 over 8 minus 1 fourth. Now, in order to subtract those fractions, I need to find out the uh, common denominator, and it will be the LCM of 8 and 4. And the least common multiple of 8 and 4, it will be 8. And this LCM 8, I will divide by each denominator. And the result, I will multiply by the numerator. So 8 divided by 8, it's 1. And 1 times 10, it will be 10. And 8 divided by 4, it's 2. And 2 times 1, it will be 2. Then we have 10 minus 2, that's 8 over 8. and a over A, it's equal 1. The answer, it will be letter C. In the next question, we need to solve this. The statement of this question told us that the number 2 minus 0 0.5, it, the question asks, uh, uh, the number 2 minus 0 0.5 is how many times the number 1 minus 0 0.5? Okay. 2 minus a half, 2 minus 0 0.5, it's 1.5. And 1 minus 0 and 5, 1 minus a half, it will be a half. Okay, to solve this question, in, in other words, we need to find out how many times this number how many times this number is this number? So, in other words, I need to find out what is the number that I need to multiply by 0 0.5 to get 1.5. And note, see, 1.5, 1 and 5, it's the triple of 0 0.5, okay? If you multiply 0 and 5, 0 0.5 by 3, you get 
1.5. So the number, it's three times 0 0.5. Letter C will be the answer. And the last one that I was showing in this video showed us that if x minus y it's r and x times y it's s, then x minus 2 times y plus 2 it will be equal what? So to solve this, I will just repeat firstly, and I will use the distributive law of multiplication regarding sum and subtraction. So using the distributive law, I will multiply x times y, that will be xy, x times 2, that will be 2x, minus 2 times y, it will be minus 2y, and minus 2 times minus 2, it will be minus 4. I will just... Uh, I will just do one more step before to change the value of x, y, x, uh, and y. Uh, I will change in a moment x times y, I will change by s. But before I do that, I will just do one more step here, okay? I will put this 2 into evidence. So I have 2 times something inside the parentheses. And in order to know what I need to put inside of the parentheses, it's pretty easy, actually. You just need to divide the number that you have outside by the number that you put uh, into evidence. So, for example, if you divide 2x by 2, you can cancel out the 2s and you just have x. You keep the minus sign here. And if you divide 2y by 2, crossing out the choose you have the y to put inside of the parentheses minus 4. So now I will change xy by s, because the question told so, plus 2 times x minus y, the question told me that it's equal r, so it will be 2r minus 4, and just to put in the same order that the question put, uh, you need just to remember that the addition and subtraction are commutative operations so it does not matter the order you have the same result so i will just write to r firstly followed by s then by minus four and the answer will be letter d okay i hope you enjoyed this video and i wish to see you in the next ones bye bye have a great day